In this video, we will be repairing a ViewSonic VX2235WM that has a failed power, backlight power supply. Um, if you hook up the power, push the power button, all you get is a blinking power light. Um, so we'll show you how to take it apart in the first video, and then the other videos will show you how to do the repair on the power supply board and reassemble the unit and get it back up and running. Um, first thing you need to do, of course, is remove the power, power cord and the signal cable and then unscrew the screws and remove the base to the unit. Once the base is removed, then we can start the disassembly process. You notice across the bottom there is some small notches. What you do is take a small flat bladed screwdriver and insert in the notches. And that's the little release tabs to start separating the case. Do a slight, after you insert the screwdriver, do a slight twist, and then the case will start separating. Once you get the bottom done, kind of do the same thing with the sides. You just want to insert the screwdriver and flex it a small amount, and the sides will start popping off. Let me go to the top, do the same thing. and then you can remove the back of the cover. We'll lay the monitor down flat. Okay, with the, with the back removed, now we can remove the RF shielding to get to the power supply board. Um, there is screws around the outside of the cover. Those will need to be removed. One here, one in the back. on the end. And we'll set those to the side. The next two screws to remove are the two that hold the power plug in place. Then you'll need a 3 16 nut driver to remove the nuts on both sides of the DVI plug and the VGA plug. Set those to the side. The last thing to do will be to unplug the four backlight plugs. There's going to be a uh, blue and black plug, then pink and white and two pair of those. So you unplug those plugs and then the cover will be able to be removed. This is the power supply board that we'll be working on. So we just need to remove that board and get it ready for uh, replacing the capacitors on it. Get it back up and going. Now we can remove that board and take it over to get repaired. Uh, you may not be able to see it very well on the video. The two smaller capacitors and this capacitor are um, bulging. That's how you can tell that the capacitors are bad. And since you're uh, replacing some of the capacitors on it, we might as well go ahead and replace all of the capacitors on the board to keep from having to go back in and reopen the unit and replace the rest of them at a later time. Just go ahead and do it all at one time. Um, capacitor kits are going to include all of the capacitors needed. Um, so we'll take it over to the solder station, replace them, and see how it goes.